What's up everybody, it is Matt from Electric All Wheel and today we will be doing the video that everybody seems to want and it is the combination of two Aventon Aventure V2 batteries and that is usage of the Aventure batteries in parallel with the Datex DX2. That's a dual input, dual output combiner with such a high efficiency that the Aventon smart batteries are able to work in the parallel setting for that combiner and it is awesome that allows you guys that bought that second battery or got that second battery free in the Aventon deals to actually utilize that in line with your bike battery so that will give you double the range which is awesome we will give you some range calculations towards the end of this video we're really proud of the way the battery sits and the components that have come together and how it actually is just plug and play you do have to do some work to get there but there are no issues with cutting into the factory system of the Aventon Aventure V2 and we really appreciate that fact. Listen, if you're going to do all of this range work with your bike, it is worth noting that a suspension seat post is the way you want to go. We will leave a link to the bike case suspension seat post in the description below. It is well worth it for your bum if you're going to be out there on those long range rides. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary. And if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that Facebook group, make an event, go for a ride with your e-bike friends. You've got to make the event to have that ride. Here we go. Okay, um, just to demonstrate a couple of things for you, we're going to go ahead and pull this out. Keep in mind that we never hook this back up officially, so the screws aren't in here. This is not the way your bike will be you will need to do a full removal. And regarding that, we have the video instructions for that. We will leave a link to that video in the description below. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and pull our pack out, our, our controller plate out so you can see the install. These, this is an adapter. There's an, another adapter used. Here is the DX2 right here. And then this is our extension cable out of the bike. And that gets us our second battery plug-in. And that's what we're after. There we go. And that will work for this demonstration. We've taken off the cover plate here and just done that so we can demonstrate all of this to you guys. So now that you've seen it, you know that we have a battery connection here. And then this is the factory battery. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is plug this in. And then I'm going to make sure that my motor cable is hooked back up. And then I'm just going to demonstrate some motor power real quick so you guys know that it's on. So let me go ahead and turn the battery on. And there we go. Perfect. So this is my second battery, and then I know I have my ends here that are the factory-specific plug-ins. I'm going to take my adapters, and I'm just going to remove this male end here. I'm going to take this end, and then just plug it in appropriately. You'll notice that the, the shape of the ends of the adapters actually will correlate to what's going on with the battery. And then just to demonstrate, it doesn't fit otherwise because there is a little gap right here that offsets the pins. I'm going to go there. And then I'm going to take my bike case straps. What I'm going to do with these is actually make them one super long strap. So I got my ends correct. I'm just going to hook this around and then make it one long strap. So what, five inches maybe?
There we go. I think that'll do it. And then when you look at the battery, you can see on the bottom side, it has this groove and it fits perfect with this strap. So the very first target is to get the strap through these holes. We want to make sure not to pull the other end through it. So we're going to try and make sure that's halfway through so you don't end up trying to pull this loop through. we're also going to make sure that the grippy side of the straps are towards the battery. So here we go. So we're just going to leave that right about midway and then we're going to bring up the other loop on the other side. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this. Make sure that these are over the top. Keep in mind that this is going to cover your on button, but this is a specific notion that everyone recognizes has to happen regardless, is that you just got to press the button and that does work. So you can press the button there and then you can see the hint of green. Now this is going to keep your adapter in place. There is a lot of friction here, so I'm not terribly worried about it, but this is just an easy solution that's going to take care of the problem for you. And then this is what we will be putting into the bike. Uh, into the bike case waterproof battery bag is this unit with an extension cable. Okay, let's get to the demonstration. I'm gonna slip this over to the side so you guys can make sure to see the green light. I'm just gonna set it down and then plug it in. So now I'm going to take out my factory battery and I'm going to give it some throttle. There we go. We know that's the second battery only and it is still working. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my factory battery. And what you'll notice here is that I'm not turning on and off the bike. Now I'm just going to unplug this one. And hit the throttle again and then there it is so it never turned off because it was getting continuous power as i switched the batteries so now i'm just going to go ahead and plug this in and then run it for a minute and the thing i'm looking for is the light the light staying on and this light is staying on, so we are good to go. Now that we know that that's the case, I do want to remind you guys, you're going to have to turn these batteries on because they are on a timer off scenario, no use. So each time you go for your ride, you got to turn your batteries on. You should be used to that. Just keep that in mind. So it's just going to be a press right here. Okay. So for this installation, we're going to make sure that the loops are the stitching of the loops on the bike case battery, waterproof battery bag are up. And the plan here is the open end will go towards the C post. We will put the battery in and then use these straps to attach it to the rack. One thing I need to mention is that if you have a suspension seat post, you're going to want to watch this lip right here so that it doesn't hit your battery. And we will manage that as it comes and then make sure that it goes through. The suspension seat post is essential if you're going on these super long range rides, which are made possible by your dual battery installation. So just be wary of that as you move through this. Then we're going to take our extension cable and plug it into the second battery. And go ahead and do that. So we just have this nice long extension. I'm going to take the battery and go ahead and slip it into the bike case bag. Now, since those are up, we're just going to do a roll. We're going to bring the cord to the side and give it a roll one time and then wrap it around. And it looks like 
that with this distance, we are going to need another extension cable set, which is okay. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a second extension. Now this is the third total in the setup. And we're gonna go ahead and plug that in. So we'll run that down in between here and then make our connection where the output is for the second battery from the original installation. And we're going to turn back to our bag since we have some slack now. And we're going to tuck away some of this excess. I'm looking for ways to make sure that the bag stays secure because I know right here is the lip and I want to give my, my seat enough travel room. The seat is down as low as possible for this demonstration. So now we're going to go ahead and get our straps through. And I see this is a pretty good locking point. And there we are. And this gives our battery head room so it's not going to slip forward and then it holds so the suspension seat post can travel. From there, we just want to take up the slack and make sure that this is secure. So we're going to give this a zip tie. Well, there you have it. We have successfully installed a second 48 volt Aventon Aventure V2 battery with this Aventon Aventure step through. It gives us double the range and we are pretty happy about that. And we know that the connections will allow both of the batteries to stay awake in use, which is critical. And we also use the DX2, so we know that we have an extra output if we want to use our future accessory, accessory connection with USB ends. Check that out in future videos. We are hopeful that that is going to work out splendidly with the Datex DX2 and a setup just like this. So a lot of you were waiting on the range calculation, so let's just get to that. We're going to use 15 amp hours that's stated on the Aventon site. So here we go. So 15 amp hours of the original battery plus 15 amp hours of the second battery gives us 30 amp hours. And we're going to multiply that by 48 and we get 1,440 watt hours. And we're going to divide that by 25. 25 is the mica toll constant, which says it's 25 watt hours per mile ridden. So 1,440 divided by 25 <laughs> and you get 57 point six miles from your Aventon Aventure V2 with dual factory battery. That is crazy. Keep in mind, we do recommend a suspension seat post if you're going to start putting on miles like this. Uh, it saves your bum in the end. It is well worth the expense and the addition to your ride. I know that uh, putting together all these collections to make it unique is worthwhile, and this is definitely something that you want to have. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary. And if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in the group. You've got to make the event. Go for a ride with your eBike friends. We'll talk to you next time.